business or mailing address that I was given by him signing it would have gave me permission to use it. But he was taking it in his literal sense that I would be living there. And, and I guess, you know, <laughs> you get into people morals and such and things like that. Talk a little bit about just how big of a frustration or a roadblock that's been not being able to be able to get an ID. And how, because that was what that address was going to be for, right? So you could start, you could get an ID and stuff like that. Man, I'm pretty versatile, so I wouldn't really call it a frustration, a setback, maybe a disappointment. But, you know, I've been dealing with a lot of those. Even that I'm in this situation is a bigger disappointment. So that was just another bump in the road, you know. And you got speed bumps in the road, so you, you come to expect them. So, I mean, you know. It just allowed me in a bigger picture because I'm all about strategizing too. It's how I've navigated through life, you know, being wiser and staying steps ahead, being on my P's and Q's and all that good stuff. So it just made me have to rethink my strategy. And, and like I said, it was a blessing in disguise too because then I got to fall back. Uh, it made me think. I actually was having more success um, when I was in Maryland. You know, the Maryland uh, supplemental program was, was a, a whole lot better. You know, SNAP, as they call it. You know, I, I never, I never had a need. I, I never was in need or want of, or lacking rather. You know, glasses, a fresh pair when I need them. You know, that was yearly, bi-yearly. You know, I always had my medical. So when I went to D.C., things were, like, very different. They, are, they seem like they're in disarray. You know, for this to be the capital city of the United States, I think that's a very poor grade, you know. You know, it, Usually when you sign up, you get like three to six months. You're good for three to six months. I only had it for two months. And then when I initially signed up, I tried to get it signed over from Berlin. You know, if they can assemble task force from all the jurisdictions, surrounding jurisdictions in the metropolitan area, then you would think that this would be a, an an even easier task to, because this, is, this isn't about hurting people and stopping them from whatever drastic or extreme measure they feel like they need to take since their needs aren't being met in the first place. Do you kind of see that, that balance there? Because if they were actually taking care of those basics, maybe those people wouldn't be uh, <laughs> so desperado. I mean, that's just how I see things, to put them in perspective. You know what I mean? People got to do what they got to do, as they say, when their back is up against the wall. So I think that is totally ass backwards. Because maybe if they're taking care of their basic needs, they won't feel the need to go extreme all or nothing, do or die. So that's just my reflection on that. I call that my social reform. <laughs> That's just a portion of it. But yeah, but it seemed like I had the most difficult time behind that, you know. Uh, I was supposed to be in good for at least three months and I ended up getting dropped at two months. So, it's like they just didn't want me to eat or they just felt like they wanted to be against me. And then when I went with my paperwork to, uh, to the office, you know, my birth certificate, social security receipt, as well as my proof of income, I still walked away with no ID, unapproved. And that made me have to uh, get confirmation for this address. So, I don't know, man, there's a lot more to it than, 
you know, people say they want to go by the book or, you know, they want to tell you about the rules. But in reality, all they're doing is shuffling papers. I don't know what's that all about. All of a sudden, you got noise in the hall. But anyway, who cares if they don't like what I'm saying? That's just how I feel. That's my outlook. Speaking of outlooks, this is a good view, good outlook here. We right across from a clear channel. You can't really see them, but you might be able to see the sea in the background, the top of the building, maybe. Can you see? And that's something new to me. The even hotels. I don't know if that's part of their establishment, but I, this is my first time hearing of them. That uh, business, even that name brand, and that 7-Eleven is new. That's kind of new. And I, I went over there earlier. They got like a little lobby there, a little cafe lobby. That's fly. First 7-Eleven I ever seen like that with the lobby. But uh, Clear Channel is that's the home of 99.5 Hot 95. That's another station here, major station. It plays a uh, top 40. I wouldn't mind working for them. Uh, I, I, I had a little history with them, you know. Won a, won a video pack from them, Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> it's always good to be a winner. <laughs> and um, yeah, well, I guess I could, that's a good segue for me to tell you the story about when I went over 7 Eleven earlier. You know, when I came back to my room, I ended up. Uh, I couldn't get back in my room, couldn't get access. So, I mean, I took, I went over there to warm my meal up and get some snacks, so, you know, and, and it's like uh, the staff started acting peculiar with me. By the way, I'm not digging in my room, I'm trying to button my pants. <laughs> but uh, the staff started acting peculiar with me because I stopped and got on the internet because I got bumped off last night. They had a jazz concert here last night. So it was a lot of people, unexpectedly. But I was happy to see it because it was a radio station. I believe it was a radio station that used to be up a UDC, the jazz station they had. All the jazz stations went out of, kind of went extinct, you know, but that's, See, I'm, I'm giving you all the backstory first, and then we'll bring it back to uh, to current.